Let's get some final thoughts with our panel here. Chris, Byron, and Marie. Chris, let's start with you. Well, first of all, let's tap on the brakes. Uh, Bernie Sanders has not won the nomination. There were only three states in. That's three or four percent of the delegates. We got South Carolina. We've got Super Tuesday when there's going to be 14 states. You can certainly make a case Biden wins South Carolina. He's rejuvenated. Uh, Bloomberg has a great debate next Tuesday in South Carolina. He's rejuvenated. But right now, nobody would, you know, Bernie Sanders wouldn't trade places with anybody else, neither would his campaign. Let me make a case. I know people are saying that the Democratic Party should be in states of grief. Let me make a case for Bernie Sanders' viability. One, there are only two politicians in America now who can fill an arena with thousands of screaming fans. One is Donald Trump. The other is Bernie Sanders. He was up in Tacoma this week. He can get huge support. And, and that is, you know, the the gold standard in politics to have passion and, and a si big crowds behind you. Secondly, listen to what Mercedes Schlapp said. The two things she went off on Bernie Sanders about. One was Medicare for all. That's going to be a tough sell to a lot of people. The flip side of it is that health care and not protecting people with pre-existing conditions is a real weakness for Donald Trump or a potential vulnerability. So you could see Bernie Sanders maybe not pushing Medicare for all as much as let's protect the people who have problems. And, and another example of that would be climate change. Uh, Green New Deal, tough sell. But the idea, I'm going to try to save our planet, that's also attractive to a lot of people, including the suburban housewives. So one, Bernie Sanders doesn't have the nomination. Two, if he does get the nomination, I don't think it's the means that the Democrats have no chance. Look at the numbers, though, here today, Marie. Um, whites, Bernie Sanders, 28 percent. Pete Buttigieg, 19 percent is the next. Non-whites, Sanders, 44 percent. Joe Biden at 21 percent. In Nevada, the Sanders campaign can make the case of crossing the line, of going towards Hispanics and African Americans and winning the majority or the plurality of those voters. And they can make the case that they've brought together the Democratic coalition that's needed to win the nomination and that's needed to win a general election. There were questions about whether Bernie Sanders could do that better than a Joe Biden. If he can make that case, that is a stronger argument for him in this primary. But it's around this time in 2016, as Donald Trump was winning more contests, that you saw the rise of the Never Trumpers. And you saw this concerted movement in the Republican Party to try to stop him. Now, obviously, it didn't work. But one thing I'll be watching this week is whether, on the Democratic side, side there's a similar Stop Sanders. What do you call them? The Never Bernies? The, the Never Stop Sanders? Sanders? I don't know. Uh, so, something never I haven't come up with a name yet, because I'm, I'm not a part of it. Um, but, but it's a question whether this Democratic establishment that we've all been talking about will try to do something, try to coalesce around someone, um, or if they will buy into this argument that maybe Bernie Sanders actually has a path to win. He has a populist streak. It's helped him in the upper Midwest, certainly did in 2016. He did it with the union today. He can compete with Trump. He has a movement. That may actually uh, win the day here. We'll see. You know, whenever the Democratic Party establishment <laughs> or the Republican Party establishment makes itself forceful or public, it seems like that only empowers yeah. any other campaign that's tapping into that. It backfires. I, I was covering that Never Trump movement pretty closely, and the one thing they realized was that they were too late. Donald Trump had been running for president for a year at that point and had developed a lot of voter loyalty. Now Bernie Sanders has won uh, votes in Iowa and then New Hampshire and then Nevada. He may do really well in South Carolina. Then we're going to have this question. Question. How about California? You know, and Bernie? Yes, absolutely. Well, we're going to have this odd thing. South Carolina is a week from today, and then that's a Saturday, and then the next Tuesday is Super Tuesday. That just kind of makes no sense to me as a scheduling matter. But there it is, and I think your voters. It's going to be in part a referendum on whether a candidate, Bloomberg, can just skip all the early stuff and say, "Well, vote for me now." You haven't really seen me for a long time. You've seen all these people out in the fields working, trying to win your vote, but vote for me instead. Um, I think it's going to be a huge referendum on that, and I don't. I don't think he's going to do really well at it. Do you think the debate Tuesday is make or break for Bloomberg? 
Well, when you got an unlimited amount of money, nothing is make or break. <laughs> but but I would say to the Democrats, they don't need my advice uh, on that stage. Maybe instead of focusing on Michael Bloomberg, maybe you ought to be focusing on Bernie Sanders because he is cleaning your clock and everybody sitting there e e devouring each other. They ought to go after the front runner. There's no, you know, no medal for second or third place. You're either the nominee or you're a loser. And at this point, Bernie Sanders is picking up steam. Does the field narrow because because of today? No. But it will after South Carolina. No. But it will after South Carolina? Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, if, if Biden doesn't win South Carolina, he's dead, isn't he? He's just dead. And there's no point in going on to, to Super Tuesday. I was thinking back to Jeb Bush in 2016, who was making a last stand in South Carolina, and he didn't make it through the night. Also, I, I just think people are going to really run out of money. And first of all, there isn't that much money you can get between Saturday and Tuesday. As you That's point right. out, there's no, <laughs> there's no gap at all. But, you know, we, to go into 14 states broke, it's, it's going to be pretty tough when Bloomberg has all this air cover, you know, b millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in ads. Panel, it's been a pleasure on a weekend day. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for our special coverage of the Nevada caucuses. Senator Bernie Sanders, the big winner there, called by the Fox News Decision Desk. I'm Brett Baer in Washington. Join us next Saturday for live coverage of the South Carolina primary.